Here is an example of a smoothly prepared subgrade with an underdrain cut into it. A series of underdrains are often used to control uplift forces. Note that these drains are outside the sealed system. Inside the sealed system, we see another series of drainage pipes. We can also see, to the left of the image, the base of a gas outlet rising vertically. Drainage pipes lie within the aggregate drainage layer. Water makes its way through the aggregate into the pipe system driven by gravity and hydraulic gradient. Again, we can see the bases of multiple gas outlets. Installation sequences are carefully designed so that drainage pipes are not damaged. Note the aggregate is dumped, then pushed by the bulldozer into place. The bulldozer and dump truck must not be driven directly on the lining system. The drainage solution for side slopes is different to the base of a landfill. At the base, a gravel layer is often used, but this is impractical to construct on steep slopes. Instead, geosynthetic drainage products are often used. A 5mm thick geonet provides the equivalent flow of a 300mm gravel layer. This close-up of a geonet shows how the two strands of synthetic net form a cavity to allow the flow of liquid. Two layers of geotextile may be used. They are bonded to the net and must not be allowed to intrude into the cavity and inhibit the drainage flow. In this instance, the geonet is being used to carry water down the external face of a landfill. It forms an integrated system with the drainage pipe running along the top of the landfill cell. Where side slopes are not so steep, aggregate can be used. However, you can see the difficulty in placing the material and maintaining a consistent thickness. Even on the base of landfills, geonets can be used as a drainage layer. In this instance, it is used instead of drainage aggregate. Landfill capping systems. A landfill cap seals the top of the landfill after it has been decommissioned, usually when it is full. Capping is one step in the rehabilitation of a landfill. Waste will continue to decompose inside a decommissioned landfill. The cap is important to prevent more water from entering the system. It also must allow gas to escape. Like the base and side slopes, the cap is made up of several components. When the landfill is full, a geotextile layer is rolled out over the top. This separates the waste below with the sealing cap above. The sealing properties are provided by a geosynthetic clay liner or geomembrane. Below the seal is a gas collection layer and above it a water collection layer. A drainage layer. Soil is then used to cover the whole system and promote vegetation. The key issue in cap design is settlement. As the waste beneath consolidates, the landfill cap will move downwards. It must be able to do this without introducing leaks. Soil is placed above the cap to support vegetation growth and remediation of the site. It cannot support construction and is most often used for parkland. The landfill cap provides a long-term stable barrier between the waste and the surrounding environment. This image shows three landfill cells, each in different phases of their life cycle. The foreground shows one being capped, while at the back left we can see a new cell being prepared for use. This old style landfill is being capped. You can see the proximity to residential housing. 
Note, a cap typically has angled sides to move rainfall to the edges of the cap, into drainage channels, rather than risk infiltration. Vents are used to allow the escape of landfill gas. The GCL must be carefully sealed around the vent. This is a recently completed landfill cap. If you look closely, you can see two gas vents rising through the layer of cover soil. Thanks to the following companies which supplied images or contributed to the development of this unit. This lecture series was funded and created by International Fibre Centre, TTNA, the Monash Geomechanics Group at Monash University.